All right, Beatrice, we are getting into the valley. We are on season one, episode nine. This episode is entitled The Big Bear Bombshell. Okay. Okay. We're going a big bear hunt. Yeah. Got some drama. Uh huh. All right. So this starts out, we're at Kristen's, right? We're back at the James May t shirt soft launch. Yeah. It's like the aftermath of it. Everybody's all upset Zach because is crying. Zach's not, a, not invited to Janet's thing and he's crying about it. And they see. A little weirdo. Yeah. <laughs> a little weasel. In pink Crocs. Who's totally recording and snooping on people's on conversations. On the periphery, just listening and texting Janet and letting her know everything that's happening. And so Jasmine stops the conversation, marches up to this person. His name is Simon. And he's like, what are you <laughs> fucking doing? Yeah. Are you recording us? Are you, what are you doing? And he's like, oh, no, no, no. I'm just, Christ- I'm not, I- I'm janet's friend and i'm sending her text and it's nothing and they're like get the fuck out of here you weirdo for real that was so bizarre that just shows how much of a mean girl yeah. and an evil person janet yes. is because you have fucking spies you have nobodies mm-hmm. who are at these parties crashing it just eavesdropping and texting you right because you're that nosy yeah you definitely asked him to do that it's not like he took it upon himself oh my God. to record and to text you asked him to go to the party specifically so you could get intel and that is some trash awful behavior like, she's a terrible person i love that we're seeing mask off janet though i know i'm like get a life i can't i feel bad for jason because now he's chained to this bitch jason really seems to be somebody who has integrity and we're gonna yeah. talk like later in the episode like he's getting pissed already with all the gossip and i'm like you live with the worst gossip in this entire group how do you stand it i don't know i think he's realizing it now because she's home and pregnant and he's like oh god i mm-hmm. fucked up i'm like yeah you did yep (laughs) you definitely did and then we have jesse's short ass bitch ass coming home from his one day ayahuasca retreat a changed man yeah he went through ego death yeah (laughs) allegedly okay you went through ego death and he (laughs) seems really zen i guess in a different sort of energy and vibration michelle notices immediately she's like yeah you seem like a different kind of a person and that's great Mm -hmm. but i'm like she's yawning though she's (laughs) while he's going into his entire hallucinogenic experience she's like literally looking away and yeah she hates him oh she She doesn't love him anymore no she's banging multiple other people quentin tarantino and i'm asking the question like did you guys know when you came on the show that you were divorcing and like you were just acting for the first half of the season to give us the impression that you were together because it feels to me like they don't like each other on any level. Well, maybe, Mm -hmm. maybe Jesse is desperate to keep it together, but I mean, he doesn't like her though. No, he doesn't respect her. What I noticed in this scene is when he said, um, when he went to the spiritual retreat, that his first thought is typically like, how can I manipulate the situation? Yes. I was like, whoa. But I can't, I couldn't do it in this uh, retreat. And so I kind of had to submit and like go through the the process and see what happens. But I'm like, whoa, you're toxic. Hella toxic. Also a narcissist. Yes. And I'm like, I'm glad that you have that moment of awareness that you do that, that you manipulate every situation. But like Michelle calls out in her talking head, she's like, you can't change this shit overnight. Mm -hmm. You can't kill an ego this big overnight. And (laughs) she's so right about it. Yeah. And it's, he was creeping me out. Like he was so affectionate with her, like breathing in her ear and hugging her. I'm like, she hates you yeah she's already fucking other people yeah and he's i think she came into it knowing she was gonna leave his ass i don't think he knew i think he maybe had an inkling Mm -hmm. but denied it right and drank his bordeaux and just lived his life on chateau marmont (laughs) and was fine Mm -hmm. but now he's realizing it in real time yeah i love to see it honestly yeah in the preview it seems like he's having a come to jesus moment about the state of his marriage let's go uncensored for a second yeah So now let's come back from Uncensored. And by the way, if you are watching YouTube or if you're listening to our regular pod, if you want to hear the Uncensored bits that we talk about, you got to subscribe to us on Patreon. We don't always have something Uncensored to say, but like if it's too deep, if it's too personal, if it's too 
raunchy and crazy, crazy yeah we stick it on the patreon yeah but so back to jesse like so he's had this 24 hour experience he has an epiphany of self and he thinks he's achieved enlightenment and hanging out <laughs> okay. in the fifth dimension and michelle is just staring at him with loathing in her eyes and totally i kind of felt bad for him really well, I, 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 I hate him so much but he's like a little boy kind of a person He's just like a little petulant boy that is seeking the love of his wife. And I just felt bad because she is never, ever, ever going to give it to him ever. God, you have more compassion for him than I do. Because I'm watching this and I'm like, you are so dumb. Because this whole like spiritual, like psychedelic experience thing is so trendy on social media right now. Like everybody and their mother is like, yeah, I did ayahuasca last Saturday. So stupid. I experienced ego death. My third eye is open and all my chakras are aligned. Okay. Like shut up. <laughs> like you okay. don't know what you're talking about. No, you don't. It's this like pseudo spiritual spirituality right. where you act like you're super enlightened but you're literally the worst so mm-hmm. I, when he's talking about all this i'm like you're so dumb i mm-hmm. you know i have grace for you love thy neighbor whatever mm-hmm. like except for jesse lally yeah like fuck you <laughs> like, well he's a shallow person he doesn't know how to be a deeper person no, he, he does he's trying to approximate his idea of what a deep person might present as right but he doesn't know how to do it because he could never be one exactly and that's pretty sad but yeah. he knows he wants his wife he knows he wants his daughter he knows he wants his life he wants the illusion of it right so this is what he thinks he can do to get that. And it's just yeah. so superficial. It's pathetic. It's pathetic. Yeah, it's super pathetic. And then speaking of pathetic, we have Janet calling up her snitches to come over to her house. Uh-huh. Simon and his minion. for Big Bear. But yes. they're really showing up to film a scene where they bash Kristen again and talk about the James May party. Mm-hmm. And then they tell her, yeah, um, actually, a lot of people are pretty sad. Speaking of people who are sad... Zach was crying because you didn't invite his ass. And she's like, oh, no, really? That wasn't my intention at all. Let me call him. And then she calls him. Yeah. And he chews her ass I loved out, it. which oh. I thought was so fantastic. So and great. to paraphrase and to shorten what he said is basically like, what the fuck did I do to you? I have been nothing but a friend to you. And why wouldn't you allow me to go on? What is a cast trip? What is an opportunity for me to solidify myself in this cast? Yeah. But you're taking this away from me and you fucking presume to take it away from Kristen as well. Mm-hmm. Thinking you can ice her out maybe of the show. She's such a snake. Yeah. And so Zach has her number and he's not giving her any quarter and immediately because he's not contrite because he's not crying she's like well you seem awfully entitled to come along on my baby moon like who do you think you are to just expect an invite like oh my god you're not the queen of this group again like we've been saying i hate her so you're much. only on this show because Jax, taylor and Kristen mm-hmm. are famous and that's the only reason why you have any notoriety but you suck mm-hmm. janet yep when Zach, literally, he's like, I've been a good friend to you. But in her talking head, she's like, I can't trust him because he's friends with Kristen. So I'm just not going to associate with people like that. Right. And we've had our ups and downs. And there have been some things that Zach has done. Oh and God, so, whatever. like, I was willing to start over. But, like, yeah, now, after the way he talked to me, I don't think I can do that. I'm like, fuck you. Seriously. Bitch, get fucked. God. I hate her so much. I mean, it's, she came into the... She took an offer from her friend Kristen and I presume Jax a good faith offer to come into a show that has turned out to be wildly successful and within two episodes began to make moves against Kristen and all I could think about during this episode was how well Kristen is playing this Mm -hmm. she's playing this and Janet even says she's acting like she's a victim yeah and I don't maybe Kristen is a little bit. Maybe she's tr- doing that a little bit, but I she's guess. coming off really high, sweetie. Hi, she's coming off really high, baby. <laughs> really sympathetic, self aware, like she actually wants to improve herself. Yeah. She's not being too forceful. She's not like requiring that people spend time with her. She's doing it right. And Janet looks like such a fool. So, of course, I went to her Instagram. Oh my God. And she's posting, but like all of her comments are limited. Of course they are. So talk about living in the comment section. Uh. Janet is living in the comment section, which is causing her to live in her head because the entire universe doesn't like you. Oh my Janet. gosh. I hate when people limit the comments. Mm-hmm. You have all this fire to be on this show doing all of this dirty shit. Yeah. 
But then you limit your comments because you can't hear the feedback. Right? Yeah. 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 You just want people to suck your dick. Okay. Right. Fuck you, Janet. Yeah. And then we have everybody heading over to Big Bear for her baby moon. Yeah. After all this. And the only thing that was interesting on the way there was the guys, Jesse and Jax, saying, yeah, we're not getting fucked. Yeah. And they say this in front of Jasmine, who's in the back. Right. And I think Brittany... And Michelle are in the car, too. I forget who was in that car up there. But they were talking about Jesse and Michelle having some kind of fight the night before Mm -hmm. because Jesse wanted her to wear um, her lingerie for fantasy night at Big Bear. And she's like, I'm not wearing next to nothing in front of all of these randos. Thank you. Right. And he's just like, I want you to wear it for me. And they had a fight. And that segues into him saying, well, we don't have sex. And Jax is like, don't look at me. We don't have sex either. Yeah. None of these men are having sex. None at all. And I think that's when Brittany, I I think she's in the car and she's like, yeah, I mean, we wouldn't because you make me feel like shit. Oh, God, that's right. She was there. So Michelle must have been there too, probably. Yes. And and she's commiserating with Brittany too. You know she is. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure on off camera, Michelle is telling Brittany, just leave him. Yeah. Just dump his crusty ass. And I agree. Yes. After what we saw in this episode. For I mean, real. After all of the episodes, but especially this one. Yeah. So then they arrive at this rental and it's actually a pretty nice so rental. So did we believe Janet when Janet what? said that the price oh. of her house in Los Angeles <clears throat> yes. was the same amount as the house that they rented in big bear so like if she sold her house in la she could buy this house in big bear because i'm like i really don't think so you look like you're living in a three two Mm -hmm. small little ranch Mm -hmm. i've seen a million of them in southern california and maybe it's a one million dollar house because you live in california but that house in big bear was stunning yeah and she's probably looking at what it sold for like i don't know 2018 2019 Mm -hmm. because i'm sure that house has just been a rental ever since then so i'm like girl (laughs) shut up big bear is beautiful and Mm -hmm. it's like you know near la well not near la but you know i mean it's like a couple hours out in southern california Mm -hmm. yeah so it's like very expensive it's kind of like tahoe in that way it's a beautiful area shut up and i think she's putting on airs i think she's trying to pretend that they make a lot of money and that their house is worth a lot yes like it's only worth a lot because you live in an inflated section of the country and yes is a fucking dump i'm sorry it's i mean i know it looks nice and everything i'm just saying Am I terrible? No. It's a dump. Yeah. Well, it's a dump dump because she lives in it. And she's also like Jesse Lolly in that Mm -hmm. way. Like, it's all about status. Mm -hmm. It's all about fame and notoriety. Who Mm -hmm. likes who? Like, you're gross. Yeah. You're the worst kinds of people. Yeah. Well, not Jason. Just her. No, not Jason. Her, Janet and Jesse Lolly. Yes. They're the worst. Thank you. So when they're at the cabin, of course, Jesse brings all of his booze. Because he's got to have his Bordeaux. <laughs> he's got to have all of his liquor and everything. Right, right. Um, they, everybody chooses their rooms and everything. And then Jesse and Michelle choose their room. And he's like, I want this to be a sex trip. Yeah. He's making his intentions known. And she's immediately turned off. Repulsed yeah. by the idea of sleeping with her own husband. Mm, and mm. doesn't look like that's going to happen no, on this trip. No, girl. No at all. And then we have people going on to a pontoon boat. Oh, well, before we get to the pontoon boat, we have like the download out on the deck where Janet is telling everybody what the day is going to be like. Oh, right. And this is where she's like now, because I think Jesse says something like, can you guys hear that? It's the sound of no drama right. because Kristen's not here. <laughs> yeah. And Janet immediately is like, stop it right there. We're not talking about Kristen this weekend. We're here to have fun. Ooh. We're here to have a good time. And so anybody who talks about Kristen is going to have to put a $20 bill in this jar. And the people who don't talk about Kristen are going to be able to take that money home at the end of the weekend. So she's putting her foot down. Yeah. And I guess the girls are going to go on the pontoon. Right. And the guys are going to get drunk <laughs> on the drinking beach. hard liquor in the car in an open <laughs> container and stuff and on the beach they're drinking tequila yeah and vodka and stuff yeah so that that's the plan yeah and then on the pontoon boat immediately. janet immediately asks jasmine what happened at the t-shirt party and everything as if she doesn't fucking know because she had her minions there you had a spy there literally <laughs> recording everything and texting you the entire time absolutely wild and this conversation with jasmine got me heated because janet is coming in harsh she's like i just i'm nosy i want to know everything jasmine's kind of trying to tell her 
And then something happens where she's like, I think Jasmine's interrupting her a lot. Yeah, she's talking about Zach and like their relationship and why she didn't invite Zach. And this is where Jasmine is cutting in to kind of advocate for her friend. And Janet ultimately gets pissed off and says, basically, you're going to let me finish what I'm saying? I know. Real snappy. Really rude. Real bitchy. Really bitchy. And Jasmine in her talking head, she's like, you're really going to give me attitude when I'm planning you this whole ass baby shower Mm -hmm. and I got you all these expensive ass gifts? Watch it, prego. Right. You're heavy with child. But that's another mask slip. You can Mm -hmm. kind of see Janet's ultimate nature. Like, how dare you interrupt me? How dare you not let me say what I want to say in front of the cameras, which I have pre-planned for days before this? How dare you call me out on my bullshit for alienating Zach, who never did anything to you. And I thought that the pretense of not inviting Zach was that he wasn't part of a couple. But here's Jasmine. I know she's in a couple, but like Uh her her partner's not there. So how come Jasmine? Because Janet, you are a see you next Tuesday. Yes, she a hypocrite. Yes. Meanwhile, at the beach, while the girls are on this weird pontoon boat, the guys are getting hammered at the beach Mm -hmm. and this is where Jax kind of brings up because jesse's like floating in the water or something he's away yeah drunk in the water he bring Jax brings up to the other guys like hey um i know this secret about michelle because Kristen won't shut her big fat mouth and she's saying this around everywhere but i'm also spreading it myself don't worry about that but i just you know (laughs) i feel like we might have to talk about it on this trip i feel like we need to say that you know michelle's been texting other guys and immediately jason's like um are we just a bunch of little bitches why are we gossiping about this shit if you have something that you want jesse to know why don't you just say it right to his face thank you Love it. And Jax has nothing to say to that. But like what really killed me in that scene was that Jax threw Kristen under the bus again so harshly. Like, I know she's a liar. I know she lies about absolutely everything. So I don't know if I can trust what she had to say to me. But like, I really feel like maybe we should tell Jesse. I'm like, Jesus Christ, you could have just said there's a rumor floating around. Should we tell Jesse? But like every opportunity to throw Kristen under the bus he takes it, which is why we needed a reunion. Yep. We really needed a reunion so everybody could have watched these episodes and we could have addressed some of this shit after the fact. It's really a travesty that we don't have a reunion. I feel robbed. Me too. Of all my time, I'm watching this season and I don't get a reunion. I don't get a reward after this. No. Shit. No, nope. you just get fatter. I guess. <laughs> we just get fatter on the trash, baby. <laughs> I guess. But I think Jax is honestly just doing this because he's taking the heat off of himself or he thinks he's trying to take the heat mm-hmm. off of himself because he starts acting like an asshole to britney later yeah. in the episode which yeah. we'll talk about yep. what a jerk then we flash over to luke and Kristen because Kristen's not invited so she's in her dowdy apartment with luke her last name is dowdy oh yeah dowdy. see there you go <laughs> dowdy dowdy <laughs> dowdy dowdy they're in their apartment because they're getting ready for a couple's counselor who's going to make a home visit i guess and do therapy with them like dr orna style yeah which I love. Which is very interesting. Which, by the way, we are going to be covering on Patreon starting in June. Yeah. It's a show called Couples Therapy it's on Showtime. So and I think Paramount Plus with Dr. Orna. And she's a counselor who is the best. She's so awesome. We geek out so hard on this show. So yes. we're going to be covering it over there if you guys are interested. Just yeah. by the way. I liked this counselor. Yeah, I did too. And we did learn in the conversation with the therapist that... Luke and Kristen don't know where they're going to live, so they're still questioning that. Yeah. They never talk about finances because I'm uncomfy. It makes me so uncomfy. It makes my pussy dry up is what she says. Right. And also they have absolutely no support from any family anywhere because Luke's is in Indiana and Kristen's in Michigan. Mm -hmm. And so they're starting out this baby journey in a deficit. Yes. And the couple's counselor is like, maybe you should figure this stuff out before you bring a child into the world. That would probably be good. Maybe you should get a support system. And then this is where Luke is like, yeah, I mean, she's got a lot of friends here, but I think they all fucking suck. It's like, I hate them. They're and I don't want to be people. here. They're awful people. I don't want them around any baby of mine. Like, why would I ever do that to my child? Based. And so we don't have a support system. And 
I thought it was such a comment on everybody else. I was just thinking about what they were going to think about when they saw that played back because oh, yeah. they really are terrible friends to Kristen. Jasmine, you say you're Kristen's friend. You're not a great friend to her. Mm-mm. You're not there. Zach, you're the only one who's kind of there. Brittany, Kinda. you fucking suck and talk about Kristen. Yep. Jax, you hate Kristen and sabotage her all the time. Nobody is good to Kristen. Yep. So nobody in this group is going to be there to support her except maybe Danny and Nia. Yep. Which, by the way sidebar what so somebody commented either on Jax taylor's post or on a post that he ultimately saw saying like and i paraphrase thank god for danny and nia i mean we've got this one couple out of all the couples (laughs) who you know are so great and so wholesome and we heart them and Jax says something along the lines of yeah we'll see how that ages (gasps) implying potentially that there might be some issues between Danny and no. Nia. No. I hope he's just maybe projecting because he's bitter because he's going to be a divorced 40-something-year-old. So because did you see Danny's bod? Yes. He had those. He had the dick root. He had the dick root. He had the swim trunks. <laughs> were you looking? Sla- were you of on course. Him? Slung low on his hips so everybody could see the V down to the dick root. I'm like, go on, Danny. I see you because there's fucking... <laughs> Jesse, I know Joey, and then With we have Jax. All, I know, so and his nude his swim shorts. We have Jax, who's just sweating because of the coke Ooh. that he does. And we have <laughs> yeah. Jason, who didn't take off his clothes, unfortunately. I know, but you know, he's just, ripped. Jason. Probably, yeah, yeah, he works he totally out all the time. Is, yeah. I mean, I wanted to see all yeah. of those don't know, right? <laughs> anyway. I hope Jax is just projecting me with too because I love them. Yeah, but anyway, Luke and Kristen. They seem like they're an okay couple, but they need to figure their shit out. Yeah, they have a lot working against them. Well, and maybe it seems like Kristen and her talking head, she's like, I don't really want to live in the middle of nowhere in Colorado, but with the way everybody's treating me, I'm like, maybe it's probably for the best. I'm like, please, mm-hmm. if your nine years of therapy is going to do anything, maybe you should have a little bit of self-worth and leave LA and live your happy life with Luke. um colorado's banging i love colorado i lived in colorado for several years i would do anything to go back to colorado or to a neighboring mon- mountain state that's where the shit's good well maybe I don't know he's what you're in talking eastern colorado or something or like oh, grand God. junction you like know lyman I mean? oh, yeah shit Greeley. yeah no thank you yeah he's no, probably in like a worse area <laughs> and there's such beautiful parts of california like you see I big know. bear and you see tahoe and the sierra the nevadas Redwoods. i mean oh my yeah. god it's gorgeous it is but all anyway, the people ruin it. <laughs> we hate on California too. You do. I don't. My I, mom is from El Segundo. My family is from California. I have a lot of friends there. Dude, I love California. I have family in California. I've been you there a million California, times. You love California, bitch. No, I love the f- scenery and stuff. I just mm. hate like the shitty people that move to California and then ruin it for everybody else. Okay, Luke. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Okay. Anyway. Don't come at me, bro. We're back at the beach after... Luke and Kristen's okay. little segue. Yes. The guys are still getting drunk. And this is where Jesse yeah. is so shit faced. He keeps attacking and like straight up bullying Danny. He's like yeah. beating on him. Like and he like, took his towel and he wrapped it around his neck and I he's know. like dragging him back with the towel. I'm like, what are we doing here? We're grown ass men. And for Jesse, who's like always concerned about his image and how he comes off, I'm like, you look stupid like i don't think he cares about his image at all well, he said on business. camera i know but the shit he's been doing on camera this entire season he does not care but like yeah it was really troubling actually yeah. and you have to ask yourself the question okay like when you drink all that wine or that bordeaux at home at the chateau marmel <laughs> is this how you're getting with michelle like what kind of husband does she have when you're drinking because it seems you really like to drink since you're drinking at 9 a.m you drink a champagne well we kind of see it because nia yes. at some point brings up like the self-defense class that she taught all the girls or whatever and she asks the girls to kind of practice with the guys and i think she tells michelle like hey i know you weren't at this thing but let me teach you some moves that you can use on jesse and so michelle and jesse are kind of tussling kind of wrestling but then he gets way too aggressive and like hits her nose when she's like only a few years well fresh. she slaps him too well Did she you does see that because <laughs> she hates him you just like it yeah <laughs> they slap him harder but like first she slaps him yeah. she's like do you want to fight for real and yeah he's like, yeah and so she slaps him and i'm like whoa that's a little bit much mm-hmm. and then they're starting to tussle and then he gets in her face and he he goes a little hard and he hits her nose mm-hmm. and apparently she had a nose job like a few years a ago, year ago or whatever, whatever. 
So she's worried about it and she's pretty upset. But like these people just continue to embarrass themselves as a couple. They're in every really group situation. They're bad. They're, They're bad. so toxic. Like both of them are awful. And then we have Britt kind of talking to Jax on the side and she's like talking to him about, yeah, you should bring up michelle texting other guys you should maybe talk to her about See? it i'm like girl she's a trash bag she's so trash she's not great Brittany. yep and then i think Brittany gets like a text or something she gets a video of their kid cruise at some swimming lessons or whatever he's like crying in the video she's got it at full volume because she's a mom mm-hmm. and <laughs> she's old so and she's, she's emotional looks like she's yes. crying too because cruise is crying yeah and jacks is an asshole and just starts screaming at her in front of everybody turn your fucking volume down Mm -hmm. why do you have that on i don't want to hear him crying that's my kid as if you're justified in yelling at your wife in front of everybody i thought that was wild and i think she says something like you i can't even be emotional like i can't even have a feeling or a thought and he's like and again he's like yeah no and he stalks away and it is really insensitive and this really does give us a glimpse i mean we know it's happening for sure yeah and i don't like Brittany necessarily but like we can tell the way that Jax is treating her 24 7 behind the scenes and we also kind of pick it up as well before the the final act where Brittany is sick in the car because she gets car sick yeah because they're heading back to the rental right yeah. and i think all even on the way up she was car sick and yep. she's been car sick before yep and she's telling the girls like when they're heading back to the rental like please don't tell him that i'm car sick and that i just threw up because he's gonna blame it on drinking but i didn't drink yep but i know that's what he's going to do so she's like planning her day like with what she can say to her husband so that he doesn't yell at her and shame her in front of all of these people and i'm sorry like if you're sitting in a group setting and you're showing your wife your kid screaming on the internet or whatever i'm not gonna scream at you no i'm gonna be like oh my god are you okay like what's going on like right he's the worst he is the absolute worst and everybody sees it like everybody was making comments like yeah this is just what Jax does this is how he talks to her all the freaking time he does not care Brittany says on camera like yeah he doesn't care if it's on camera in front of my mama my mm-hmm. grandparents my parents whatever he's going to talk to me like that no matter what right and i'm like that's fucked up Brittany. yeah but she accepts this she behavior does. i know it's sad so it's i think a, a somewhat transactional relationship she wants the baby from this man and she wants to stay with him yeah i think she wants the fame and everything that comes with it but like in exchange for that this is the man that you're with and he doesn't want to change nope he's not undertaking any kind of process to change so this is what it is yep so thank god she left him honestly i hope she stays gone yep and then also on the way up to the rental, we have the guys in their car. Oh, yeah. And this is where Danny confronts Jesse for beating on him at the beach. And Picking he's like, on him. yeah, dude, that was kind of lame. Like, you just are kind of coming on me hard. Like, maybe stop. And Jesse just calls him sensitive. Like, maybe yeah. stop being a little bitch baby, basically. Yeah. And then Danny's like, can you just, like, apologize like mm-hmm. a real man? And Jesse's like, well, I'm sorry that you're offended. Yeah. And then Danny's like, that's not a real apology. And they kind of get at it a little bit. And it's frustrating for Danny because he's the only man of integrity besides Jason. maybe Jason yeah. in this group. And I'm like, yeah, Danny, don't fight this because Jesse's a piece of shit. And he's drunk in this moment. And he is very yeah, drunk. He's drunk. And then we're back at the rental. Jesse stomps oh God, off. Little Lord Fauntleroy <laughs> stomps pump. away from the SUV with his little shoes on and his <laughs> unhappy face. His and he tall hair. stomps away to his room and... He's just Pouts. throwing a tantrum because somebody called him out for his bad behavior. Yep. And so Michelle comes into the room. She's like, what's going on? He's like, I just want to take a nap. <laughs> just leave me alone. Let me take a nap. <laughs> Michelle's like, okay. Okay, bye. And then this is where Michelle kind of talks with Jax in the kitchen. He's like, hey, right. I got to talk to you. I got to talk to you about some shit that's going around the That group. Kristen's been saying, and, and I think you need to know about it. And I'm like, well... Didn't Kristen show the texts that confirmed that it was Jax that was the one that said the thing? Yes. But now Jax is saying to Michelle that Kristen said the thing at a group girls night after they left. Kristen was drunk and said that. I I don't know who to believe, but I mean, 
I'm inclined not to believe Jax. No, he knows what he's doing. He knows that Michelle hates Kristen's guts. He knows everybody at this party hates Kristen right now, basically, besides maybe Jasmine, I guess. Nia doesn't. So, well, and Nia, Danny, Danny right. but they're just kind of there. They're mm-hmm. they're background characters with all these mm-hmm. crazy people. But then they go out and sit on the patio, and this is where Jax basically confronts Michelle, and he's like, yeah, this is Kristen saying that you're texting other men. And flirting with them and sending sexy pictures. And Michelle's like, yeah, I am. (laughs) And I'm thinking, huh, I'm wondering if this is a producer fake out. I'm wondering if this is chopped up, like the conversation is chopped up. And then when we get back to it next week, it's not going to really be that. But it is that because we see in the preview that Jesse is calling her out for sending sexy pictures to people. Mm -hmm. So She's going to say this. Jax is going to tell somebody. Somebody's going to tell Jesse, and thus starts the ultimate dissolution of this marriage. Which I love to see. Mm-hmm. And my vibe is like, maybe it is a little producer planned, like on Jax's part. Like he did this intentionally. I think Michelle is honestly just over it. Like she's like so done with him. She does not give a shit. She's already getting the D from Quentin Tarantino or somebody. And so she's not like, him. He lives in Israel. I know, like, but <laughs> that's the rumors. Okay. Everybody thinks they're fucking for some reason. But yeah, I think she's just done. So she's like, yeah, I don't care. It's going to hurt his feelings. And mm-hmm. I love to see it because I'm a vindictive bitch. Well, and he's an awful person. Yeah. And I don't want to say he deserves it, but like karma always yeah. comes back around honey what comes around comes back around that's right yeah so this is what's gonna happen and then we get to the preview yep where we see Jax addressing the girls at the island in the kitchen because Brittany's sick like yep. she's come back and she's got motion sickness still and he's drilling them or grilling them about whether she was drinking like how much did she drink and they're like zero like she literally had nothing to drink and he doesn't believe it and then we have Brittany poking her head around saying like why are you trying to make me look so bad and obviously so he can get custody of Cruz because he wants to divorce her ass yes which is just crazy I'm like what a piece of shit Jax is I do kind of feel bad for Brittany in that way Mm -hmm. even though she's not the best person either but it's like dang that sucks to have to your husband and she even calls him out you're my husband why are you making me look so bad I'm like oh I can't wait to see that because he hates you yeah he's fucking other people too yep and then we have Danny also crying because of everything that he's dealing with yeah. at home. I mean, he's a new dad. He's a king. I love him. He's got two little baby girls. Ugh. He's got, was Asher or something like mm-hmm. that? The other baby. Like, he's putting babies on boobs, as he says it. Yeah. But he's also working. And he's trying to take care he's of this woman who's got PPD. And she's yeah. struggling. And he's got the world on his shoulders. Yeah. And I feel bad for him. And the guys are there for him. And it looks like in that scene... Jesse and him have made up like Jesse's trying to be there for him. We'll and this see. is where we also have in the same scene, Jesse saying, yeah, like my marriage is pretty much over. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> I hope you're single forever. Like Tom Schwartz on VPR with all your plants. Right. <laughs> at Chateau Marmont. <laughs> yeah. And your bottles of uh, Bordeaux. Yeah. Loser. Yeah. I mean, it, it was a little slow, but I, I actually enjoyed it. And yeah. I'm hoping that we're going to kind of continue with the momentum of outing Janet because like when you see Zach on the couch in his interstitial and he's just like she's not just like the mean girl or a low-key mean girl she's like all of the mean girl that's Janet she's an awful person Mm -hmm. and we see Jasmine and her interstitial like who the fuck do you think you're talking to so we have more people kind of speaking out about Janet and I'm hoping that's a harbinger that things are shifting to favor Kristen please And I just keep kind of going back in my mind, Beatrice, to the fact that around this time of filming last year, Kristen actually does get pregnant. Mm. But ultimately, she miscarries. She loses the baby. And like, Mm. none of these people are going to be there for her. No, it's going to be bad. You think about the conversation with the therapist and he's like, like, who's in your donut of intimacy? Who's in your donut of support? Like, none of these people are actually going to be there for her in an authentic way. And I just feel bad foreshadowing what's about to happen. Me too. And I just, I still feel salty that we're not going to get a reunion because I feel like it would have been so fucking juicy this season. Yep. But I mean, 
we're gonna get a season two so i'm sure season two is gonna be crazy what did she do she's stinking <laughs> oh you stink lady what's going on over oh, there so yeah i think that we definitely will we're gonna get a season two because it's a yeah. really high rated show we'll get a reunion then but i wouldn't be surprised if like live on the night of the season finale on watch what happens live we get the whole cast Ooh. and maybe andy asks them some questions because he's done Ooh. that before like with below deck and mm. with some other shows so maybe maybe they'll cobble something together to satisfy our cravings Ooh. in the dumpster but we'll see oh my god that would be exciting can we yeah. watch that on peacock yeah oh, okay good watch yeah. Life is on peacock. absolutely Yay. darling well is there anything else that we have to say to these beautiful raccoons beatrice before we get the hell out of here well if you love our podcast i sure hope you go to your favorite podcast platform and leave us a glowing five star review it really helps us grow this dumpster so we can be famous and i can quit my job so thank you so much (laughs) and give me some grandbabies honey (laughs) um we will be back next week to continue our seeking sister wife journey and also all the other reality trash that we are into but until then please do not forget that we have nothing but love for you and peace out bye bye guys